put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Dishonored Video Game Review you take on the role of Corvo Atano, the bodyguard to the Empress. You are framed for her murder, and you, after being broken out of jail, you become a vigilante slash assassin, depending on the choices you make, for a group known as the Loyalists. They're a resistance group who are fighting to end the tyrannical government of the city now that the Empress is gone and they and you are doing this by taking out important people in the government. These include a leader of this religious group, the, the main religious group, some who have very important votes in Parliament, the doctor of the, the the regent. Now this does bear some similarities to V for Vendetta movie as well as book. Yeah, this thing that comes with the, the two disc deluxe edition, not actually the full book. It's like the first seven chapters, I think. These similarities include that the, the, the protagonist is this anonymous vigilante who wears a mask, who's skilled with blade, with a blade. He's got other tricks up his sleeve, although he's not carrying around a full arsenal. He's trying to force regime change through stopping important people in government, and thus and and the whole thing the whole thing takes place in a dictatorial alternate reality alternate timeline britain now there are of course also major differences corvo hardly ever speaks and certainly we never hear him speak and he does have a group to support him and there are various fantasy elements now it has already been noted by others that the plot is pretty shallow and while the whole divine right thing was big when this where, where this game was set you are trying to you know put a ten-year-old kid on the throne the the empress's daughter emily caldwin you're, you're trying to find her and yeah, basically, she's supposed to take over. Yeah, that's... Again, I, I it, it fits for the setting, but it still is a little odd to to us. And although the part of the idea here is that you are reclaiming your honor because you were framed, yeah, you don't necessarily really feel like you're reclaiming your honor. Certainly, you're getting some revenge on the people who, you know, yeah, some some of the people you take out. They didn't exactly not know that you were being framed, let's, let's just go with that. And frankly, I didn't really care what happened. Now, I, I played through it basically enjoying the game, although the very thief-like gameplay has no excuse to be anywhere as tedious as it is, I really, you know, I, I'm getting, I was getting somewhat into the world, but did not care about the plot, the characters. Now I was taking my time, which is why, it, you know, it took me about 38 hours to complete, which is also roughly the length of a thief game. So. You know, kudos. If you don't, you know, 
take your time, examine everything. You know, I I I was sneaking and knocking out throughout. So yeah, if you don't do that, you can run through it just killing everyone and you know whether whether soundly or not. Then it will take less time. You you could probably complete it in half the time I did, maybe even less if you're just really rushing through it. Although I would say you're cheating yourself out of a lot of the experience. Now, when I was halfway through the game, I could get the level one of every single power, which is yeah, far too soon, far too much. Now, now, by the end I had, I believe I had gotten all upgrades to weapon and equipment, which, again, I, I would definitely say you shouldn't be able to. You should have to choose, and, uh, yeah, you shouldn't be able to get everything. Uh, yeah. Now, I already mentioned that the thief-like gameplay is tedious here. Basically, you know, you sneak, you knock someone out or kill them, over and over. It's, yeah. I'll get more into why that isn't enough. I hardly killed anyone except sometimes rats. And yeah, basically, I didn't kill anyone I wasn't forced to. I didn't lose health. I hardly, I basically didn't use Blink the teleportation ability unless I was forced to. Nah. I did not get or much less use the other powers, which is, anyway, for this review, I tested all of them, but in my full playthrough, I didn't, you know, I'd every so often unlock powers, use them just to see what they do in that situation, then load the game, so it was, yeah, I, I wasn't using them to beat the game, I was testing them for the sake of the review. I was hardly ever detected and by, yeah, I think that pretty much covers just my own experience with it. And frankly, possibly part of the, part of the thing with the plot, and that's also eh, somewhat dissimilar for me for Vendetta, there are hardly any plot twists here like pretty much everything happens the way you expect it to happen it's actually kind of a hitman in in that regard with and it doesn't at all have the varied locations of hitman you know this is set purely in this one city hitman goes all over the world and you know thief one also has much more varied locations because that world is much more you know, here, again, here, it's all in the city. Thief, especially the first one, a lot of it takes place outside of the city. And there are various, very different settings outside of the city. Now, yes, and by the end of the game, I could get level 2 in about half the powers, which is, is a lot better than with the upgrades. That does mean you have to choose some. Now, this takes place in the industrial plague-ridden city of Dunwall with a Victorian look and some really cool designs. The, yeah, this, this mix of Victorian and industrial and, yeah, you know, you have large machines that, like, you know, early industrial, people could pr pretty much fall into one of these and be ground up, you know, and at the same time this Victorian, you know, upper class kind of thing, and you can really tell that Dunwall is succumbing to the plague, like, one of the first missions you're told, as, as just backstory, half of the city has died from the plague, or, or is plague ridden at least. I don't remember if they're already dead, but they're they're so far along that they they can't be saved, and the other half is fighting for control of what's left, and you really get that sense. Like there are not that many people on the streets, and a lot of the people on the streets, 
they're either like you know the the police basically or these you know gangsters and and such gang members rather yeah it's it's it really is falling apart in that sense and there are a lot of like closed off blocked off areas where it's like yeah you know they no one is working there anymore maybe there are, there's a real risk of playing in there you know various yeah now the ending is very abrupt and it doesn't feel that much like it matters what choices you made there are three endings and they are far too similar and it's it's basically the you know the the thing of what happened next with you know you it's it's practically just stills with text of like you know he went on to do this and this and then that yeah now this is I believe the first game I played by Bethesda and Arcane now the world is already hinted at is very dystopian I did not I, I am not reviewing the DLC I have not played the DLC which really annoys the achievement chaser and me because half of the achievements roughly half of the achievements are for the DLC now Now, there is an all-star cast for this. There's real social realism. I already someone mentioned this. You you get to see both the upper class and these more like, you know. Yeah, you, you go through the streets and people are people are like just you know, barely surviving. You know, they're they're homeless people and yeah. And several of your allies are, hey, your allies too are very, you know, cover the various classes. You know, you're working with, you know, an, an admiral, a lord, yeah. You never really get attached to Corvo because he doesn't really have a personality. And as already mentioned, we never hear him speak. You, you do get like dialogue options and the like over the course of the game. And, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, you, you choose what person he is and such. We, we never care about him. We, and, and when it's such a personal story, it can't just be, well, the, you know, it, it can't be this vague. There can't be this little meat on the bone of the main character when his entire, yeah, it's the, the game is driven in part by his trying to, you know, you're supposed to be connected, very, very connected to Emily and, yeah, really, yeah. Now, some of the voice acting is not very good, like there are some line reads. Now, the characters can be pretty bland. Also fairly one note, very, very cliche, and some of them really don't get too much to do. There are almost too many characters, you know, even for, they, they don't get enough to do even for such a short game. Now, when sometimes when you pick up ruins which you use to unlock powers, the outsider will show up to wax philosophical. Pretty much, he looks like an an, an emo guy, and you you don't know an awful lot about him, and. Part of what's, you know, he, yeah, he controls magic powers or has, yeah, you know, he, there's, there's some connection between him and the magical powers. And some, um, among your enemies is this major religious faction who are described to be, like, corrupt. And, you know, you see in their practices, they're, they're religious extremists. And... This is such an easy, it's it's such a cop-out. 
it's such an easy enemy to you know bring forth in you know it's it's much more interesting when both the upsides and the downsides and the the various world views are explored like in thief and system shock 2 you know here we we know that they're against the outsider but we don't really know anything we don't know enough about him to side with or against him in a conflict you know basically he gives us you know he he gives you the initial power and thus you know so you know because of the the magic you're supposed to like him for that and yeah that's that's about it otherwise we're not really given any reason to whereas the set side with him whereas the religious extremists it's very clear they are like actually harming people and again that is a really easy obvious you know antagonist or you know group to to be against now you can climb and jump from chains you can't swing on them but the they're, they're used well basically you know climb whether you're climbing up or down and jumping to or from you know getting on or off it without jumping it all works really well now you can jump and vault and they're both quite smooth sometimes you'll get a prompt when you can vault but not always and yeah you you can vault even without the prompt now some enemies use trip wires which you if you see them before you know you you don't have to walk you know yeah you don't have to walk around them or something you can safely trigger them and then you know some of them will have like arrows which you can then steal so yeah just to rub it in you you can swim but you you know you do have to be aware that some fish will bite you now The, the weapon wheel is very good, very fast and smooth. And that's very important because, you know, if you, if you get a lot of different ammo types and powers, you're going to need the weapon wheel. And, yeah, you know, they're, they're plain and simple. There aren't enough. If, if you, you can't put each of them to a key. I do wish, at least as far as I can tell, you couldn't choose to assign them to the, the quick slots, which you can in Deus Ex. I'm going to try not to, to, to you know, swoon too much over Deus Ex and Thief in, in this video. I'm going to try. Now, this has emergent gameplay. You can distract you know, walk, swim, rush or not, sneak or sprint. It's it's very much your choice. You know, try to avoid enemies, knock them out, kill them, you know, kill them openly or sneak up to them, kill them. Yeah. And there's this chaos system where the game adapts to how you're playing it. Basically, if you're sneaking around and only knocking people out, that leads to low chaos and you know there won't be you know guards won't increase in numbers nor will the play whereas high chaos you know if you're killing everyone yeah it's that's gonna make the plague spread and that that makes a lot of sense it's it's a really cool way to make it you know 
to, to make the game harder for the player and to really have them affect the game world. Because, really, the more people that die, the more corpses the rats have to feast on the more the rats will spread and they are carrying the plague. So, yeah, and I suppose that is for that. Now, you don't have a crouch key, which is really... Yeah, you really should have. It's, it's basically entirely contextual. If you approach, say, a table, you can hide under tables, you know, when you get close enough, he will crouch and go under the table because Corvo cannot hold his leg to save his life. And that's it. You know, you can't, like, crouch behind crates or such. When you press sneak, you know, it's, you know, it, it toggles. Possibly also possible to... There are a number of options in this game, so that's that's nice and, you know, you can really play around with that to suit your playstyle. But but yeah, for, for me it toggled and it makes you walk a little less like, you know, it, it you're you're a head shorter or something, but that's about it. And of course, you know, you you walk slower and your footsteps make less noise and such. Although this still Thief also didn't get around to this still doesn't let you land silently, you know, I... Where if you have to vault over something, or go off a chain or the like, very close to someone and you're trying to sneak, far too often you will still make just enough noise where I feel like it could have you slower like, you know, you land and it takes maybe a second for, you know, you, you land and really bend your knees and then you slowly get back up, something like that. So you weren't necessarily making noise for it because you don't always get to land from a jump or climb or the like far enough away from an enemy. Now, you can upgrade your mask to zoom and you can almost always zoom there, there are only a few situations that you can't zoom in, and zooming doesn't only mean you know spying on people. You can use it to snipe. Now, for some reason, your mask doesn't scare off NPCs, you know, pl plague survivors, and the like. Often, some will note it, like you know. Some of the gang members might say, you know, oh, you, you think you look scary in that mask? So it's like, okay, okay, th the game developers did not forget that other people can see the mask. But nobody is about, and it's not like everyone is walking around in masks. Like, you know, the, the religious group, the, the overseers might have, like, masks. And that's more or less about it, so, and you're clearly not an overseer. Yeah, that, that seems strange to me. It's, I don't know exactly how else they should have done, I, f I feel like if they had had it like the, the Mission Impossible style, you know, you just wear someone else's face, you know, Darkman style, okay, that would raise more questions than it would answer. It's like, okay, do ev does everybody have access to this technology? And, like, is anybody else going to use it or something, you know. So, so yeah, a mask that was built by one of the guys you're working with, Final Call. Yeah, okay, yeah, that, you know, it's, it's probably a good idea that not everybody who sees you is like, you're the guy who killed the Empress. So, I'm not saying I have a better solution, but it does seem a little off, you know, just... Maybe at least some of them should react by like, who are you? Are you gonna kill me? Like, you know, it doesn't exactly invite trust when somebody is wearing a full face metal mask. Although it does make a cool cover. Now the 
there are these walls of light. They're basically it's basically electricity between two poles and there there are key points that you know you basically have to get past them, some of them. And the first one you meet and the game you know yeah, it, it's well, the, the very first one you come upon. You can possess a rat and go through a tunnel. And you can also possess a fish, although not in that exact instance. But yeah, rats and fish, and then you know go through small tunnels. Yeah, that's one option. You can rewire the wall of light to let you through and, you know, scorch the you know, the, the guards, you can jump over a nearby wall, or you can just remove its power source. So, yeah, a lot of freedom in how, you know, how you play it. And, and note that if you remove power sources from such, that might be noticed. You know, it's, it's pretty clear whether it's on or off. Now, you do not have a compass, and the rare maps are all stationary. If you want a map in this game, grab pen and pad. There are some escort mission deals in this. If you don't read what the, the many papers and such you come upon, the game will probably take at least a third less time. Now, you can save progress pretty much all the time, not not while in combat and such, but yeah. And it auto saves, and it saves. There's a save file at the start of any mission that you've started on, so yeah. And you're usually sailed to and from mission locations. Now, as far as weapons go, you have a pistol which is loud and starts out slow and only holding one bullet before reloading, but this can be upgraded. And you start out limited to 10 shots for every ammo type, you know, bullets and regular crossbow arrows, you know, tranquilizer arrows. Yeah, and this, again, some of this can be upgraded. You can also upgrade accuracy, you know, the the speed with which you reload and such and such. You have grenades, which, you know, the, the typical kind of grenade. You can set traps, which are basically proximity mines. And you can set them on any flat surface, and that includes the enemy. You have a hacking tool, which is for the aforementioned rewiring, and the the ranged crossbow, which you know very useful for sniping, is not entirely silent, which I found a bit frustrating. Sometimes, if you fire very close to enemies, it will be heard. Now, the, it, in addition to trank arrows and regular arrows, it also has incendiary arrows. And yeah, those are, it's, it's, it's very cool to see an enemy, you know, engulfed in flames from that. Now, you do pretty, that, that is pretty much what you're limited to, though, of weapons and equipment. And you start with pretty much all of those. So, you know, there isn't really anything to look forward to except for the upgrades and yeah it just it shouldn't give you that much right from the start now you cannot sell ammo and such the you know the only thing you can buy with are the, other than the powers what you buy is via the money Lebowski and Basically, that is, you know, in part it's by stealing money, but it's also just by looting 
valuable objects. They're instantly converted to coin when you pick them up. You know, paintings, maps, I think, you know, feathers of, you know, a certain animal. Yeah. Now, many stealth games end up with awkward elements in their efforts to limit the abilities of the player. You, you want to disempower the player to at least a certain extent in order for the stealth to really feel satisfying. If, if you could just run through and just kill everybody without a problem, the, the stealth just doesn't feel as earned. And as much as I hate to admit it, Thief did end up with it being very, very difficult to fight or even run from enemies. So you pretty much had to be sure to not be discovered. And here you can. You can run. You can fight. You may not want to. And you may, like, you know, you may be trying to kind of customize mostly in the direction of stealth. But you still, you know, you have that blade, you know, even if you're, if, if you're just casually picking up bullets and the like, yeah, you, you can actually, you, you can employ it, even if you may not completely want to. And it's not, you know, in both games, you don't really want to fight. You, you want to be able to sneak past. Now, there are too few stealth options in spite of the tranquilizing arrows. Both guns and equipment have too few stealth options. You know, for the, the traps and the grenade, they're noisy and they can only kill. So, you know, in, yeah, in part stealth options and especially also, or also, knocking out options, non-violent, non-lethal options for completing it. You know, it's... It didn't have to only allow killing and not stunning. You know, if if we're talking similar kind of setting, kind of steampunk genre, Thief has, you know, items that only knock out. You know, you, 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 you have the flashbangs which, yeah, make it a lot easier to knock several out in a very short space of time. And I realize it came out later, but Splinter Cell Blacklist, you know, between the electric shock traps, you know, mines, and sleep gas grenades and such, yeah, it's there are a lot more options for going through the game non-lethally you know here you can't even melee stun if you were discovered you know you have to be behind them and not discovered and other than that there's only the trank arrows again limited to 10 for the crossbow which is not always entirely sound now Basically, yeah, if, if you're discovered, you more or less just have to kill that, you know, again, or you can run, but, yeah, it, it's, in Splinter Cell Blacklist, if you are discovered and you knock someone out, or kill them, or whichever, it's gonna make less, you know, you're not necessarily gonna earn the points you want to. Like, if, if you're trying to just knock everybody out, and you're discovered, and the enemy, like, attracts attention, and you still knock them out, you earn action points, not ghost points. But, you still have that option. You know, here, you can't do it at all. Now, the... It, it kind of feels like the game is luring you to killing and to you know to an extent also to being you know noisy in your playthrough 
and then it punishes you for that, which is very frustrating. You, the, this is linear progression through the levels with, you know, set missions and invisible walls. You know, it's, you have different ways to solve the, the problems that you come across, but you don't really have a choice particularly of where, you know, I, th I think it's, it's worth noting that one level literally has you crossing a bridge. And again, there, there are different ways to go, you know, you can go under it, you can go, you know, yeah, there, there are different options. And don't get me wrong, it's a cool level. And if they're gonna go linear, I, you know, it's the kind of level that I like to see for linear. But it is still, it's, it's a pretty good example. It really shows that it's a very linear game. You have to go from point A to B to, to C. Again, Thief, you can go anywhere you want. There, there are Thief levels, especially Thief 2. You can complete in no time at all. But if you do, you know, you're going to end up with less money for, you know, to buy equipment for the next mission. And, I mean, you'll be cheating yourself out of a lot of the experience. And here, yeah, instead it's just very linear. Now, you don't have to kill the, almost never have to kill your targets. The, you know, these important people in the government. You can almost always, like, you know, just straight up spare them. Maybe, you know, some, you may be able to kidnap. Now, I really wish that this wouldn't dump options and puzzle solutions in your lap. You know, you pretty much don't have to seek out these yeah, solutions and such. There are way too many new games that just do not trust the player skill or commitment. And, you know, some of these are very cool solutions, but again, you know, yeah, it's it's a lot like with Hitman Absolution. You just kind of luck into the, the solution. Now, I could make a really corny, you know, verbal joke on absolution and solution, but I will spare you this one time. Yeah, basically, because of these, you know, solutions that are just dumped in your lap, it doesn't, your progress doesn't as much make you feel like you're really skilled and, you know, your team are giving you great equipment and information, it just makes the enemy look incredibly incompetent. Now, the stealth here is not via light and shadow the way it is in Thief. It does you know, incorporate sound and silence. It's more like Commandos where it's breaking the line of sight, but First person perspective for that is very hard. There's a reason that they only made one first person perspective commandos game. There's a reason why it was the worst, and there's a reason why it was the last they made. Just when you have the bird's eye view, and you can, you know, for one thing, you can see all the enemies just straight up. And then there's the ability to check their line of sight at any time. It's still challenging because they're all watching each other. Here, a lot of them might be watching each other and you don't really get... I mean, there's, there's a power to see their line of sight. But even with that, and you really shouldn't have to use something like that just to make it, you know, possible to... to get through and it can yeah it can be really frustratingly difficult you know you don't know the patrol paths going in this is you know the enemy's turf and at any point an enemy could round a corner and that's it where again in thief it's it's because it's 
based on angles and thief it's not based on angles when you're in the dark as long as the enemy doesn't bump into you you're hidden here you can be you know you can be hiding behind a crate and there might be like two enemies on the other side and you're like straight in the middle between where they might see you and then someone else comes walking around and suddenly the crate that was a great hiding place is now completely useless and you have to back away and just yeah it the 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 stuff is only made even more frustrating by the very inconsistent AI where sometimes they have no peripheral vision sometimes they can see you from a dozen meters away even if you're in the dark yeah it's now the, the, the power that you can use uh, dark sight also works as night vision and thermal vision as far as night vision, the darkness in this game, I found that either, you know, basically you adjust the brightness. Either it's as dark as the, the game tells you it should be, and then there are areas where you can't see a thing. You're, you're bumping into enemies without having seen them. Or they're spotting you, even though you're both in equal darkness. Or you turn it up so much that you can actually see things, and then suddenly there's very little darkness left and it's very obviously like you know yeah just yeah I, I don't quite know what what happened there and as far as night vision goes it's not that effective of night vision it's still it'll still leave things very dark and again you shouldn't have to get a power just for that you know, when there's literally an achievement for completing the game without any other powers than blink. You know, not even unlocking them. So yeah, if yeah, you, you pretty much shouldn't have to get that power. It's also if you just want to use your runes for other things, yeah. And I feel like they, they could just give you other options, like a candle that you could only temporarily like you know a bunch of games will let you have like flares you know maybe a flare maybe a lit candle and then they could add that that attracts enemy attention so you'll want to use it where you're sure you'll, you're not being seen you know there are times where you're crawling through ruins of buildings and it's like there are no guards for a while around here I'm just trying to find my way it's dark, use a flare. You know, that'd be nice. I also, for some reason, this does not allow peeking over things. So again, you can be hiding, keeping in mind again, you don't have a crouch button, so it's not like just uncrouching. And even if you do, you're now, you know, risking being seen because even if you're in the dark, the enemy might see you because of line of sight. And yeah, with with it not allowing peeking up over, you know, things, you're pretty much revealing yourself. Because if you're peeking off to the side and you're blocked, you know, you, you're blocking their line of sight from where you are, then you shouldn't at least be seen. As long as you're hidden, you can, you know, look at it. the the same way that if you're under a table, the the enemy pretty much will discover you there. And from there you can see, but yeah. Now, whether guards are patrolling or stationary, they don't make enough noise, and they certainly don't make noise often enough. Like you can be eavesdropping using the you know the zoom, or not. You don't have to use the zoom for all eavesdropping. If it's a matter of distance, of course. If you zoom, the volume will also increase relative to your zoom. You can do that for hearing guards from afar, but that's useless unless you know where the guard already is. You know, again, like you're behind a crate, you're you know zooming left and like okay, there's a guard over there, you can hear him, 
but then a guard comes from the right again, crosses that corner, and then he sees you. And this just didn't, again, this is something that Thief did amazingly. And I'm, I'm really trying not to, not to praise Thief. I have videos where I praise Thief, so this is not for that. Yeah, basically, you have to be able to tell where they are. Again, not, you know, without having to use Dark Sight. Now. And you also, you can't necessarily see from their body language if they're about to move or they're going to stand still, how they're going to move, you know. And others have already pointed out there's a real similarity to Bioshock. This definitely has a lot, to, you know, takes a lot of inspiration from Bioshock without being a ripoff. Now, between missions, you'll go to the Hound Pits pub, where you can talk with your allies, get briefings, you know, buy upgrades and the like, and you can also buy extra ammo. Now, the score is very unsettling, very effective. This has a very consistent vision. Everything is really about the plague, the city's history, the surrounding, you know, cities and areas and such. You know, the, the overseers, everything about the world very much, yeah, just works in, in unison. Now, there are safes to, safes to crack and a lot of loot to get. This is a PC port and you can see you always have, you know, when, when you have things out, if you hold down the use key you can hide your weapons and such, but when you have anything out in hand, you have the blade in one hand and a gun, uh, you know, a power you know, there, there, something else in the other hand, and you press, you know, left click for one, right click for the other. You know, a lot like in Bioshock 2. Now, the game is very disgusting at points. You know, very early on, you'll see rats eat full corpses, and, you know, what you read in texts is really like, you know, there are all these descriptions of how awful life is here and there's just there are too many of them and it becomes white noise you know in Thief there are a lot less so they hit a lot harder this is what CinemaSins would refer to as an orgy of evidence that life in Dunwall sucks you know you have indoctrination of children you know you have murder and torture of adults and children you know, the, the town choir sings off-key, just things are bad. Now, the rats are also very much a danger to you. And, you know, there are a lot of places that have, yeah, that have a lot of rats, even if you're playing non-violent. Although, it'll, yeah, it'll be more if you are. And it's it's very creepy to be hounded by a pack of rats or a mischief for that matter. Now, some of what you read or listen to is stored. I think most of it is. You cannot store food; you'll eat it instantly. But there, you know, you can carry potions too. There, there's one specific potion for healing. There's also one for men. Now, there is a lot of history, lore, world building. You know, you'll find handwritten notes and excerpts from textbooks, you know, science, your diaries, scientific papers, romance novels, and other fiction. It, yeah, the, the world is very detailed. And, you know, there are these announcements of, like, new limitations.
times, you know, like, you know, you, you're gonna, you're gonna have to survive on less of a ration of the, you know, the vaccine against the rat plague, and, yeah, things like that. The use key has too many uses, so if you move a little bit, or, you know, the, more often, let's say you're trying to interact with a person and they move a little bit yeah basically you you risk revealing yourself from being hidden you know the use key will drop a body it'll open a door pick something up read you know bring something up for reading yeah and and really they could have just had this you know some some toggle functions, some some keys to press or hold to toggle what you're doing. There are a number of side quests. Now missions can be very generic. Each does have its own story. Now level design is fairly nice, and there are. You know, I mean, I already mentioned that it's limited to the city, but you do explore the city. You know, there are loading docks, poverty string streets, distillery, the aforementioned bridge. And the, the levels are huge and open. It's just, again, you do have to go through them in mostly a set order. But you can also, you know, go back and forth. It doesn't like block off the path backwards. You can go on rooftops and gangways to, you know, you can, you can, many times, you can sneak above the enemy. And if you go back to, you know, if a mission down the line has you going back to an area you already visited, you know, some some buildings might be blocked off, there might be more guards, more, you know, technology in place to, yeah, to, to make it harder for you to go. And again, it really shows that you are, you are affecting the world, you know, even if, again, even if you're playing non-lethally, yeah, what what you're doing is not going unnoticed. Now there are four difficulty settings affecting how much potions give you, how much damage you take, the the AI, but it even on the hardest difficulty setting, it can be pretty easy. You know. Now there's not necessarily a lot of replayability, like I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get more into that. Now, since you can carry so little ammo, you know, if you're getting into a fight, you'll want to aim very carefully, not waste any ammo. Use every gun and ammo type available and raid bodies. The, you know, enemy guards, a lot of them might carry, like, pistols or... The like and yeah, that begets you more bullets. Now there is a mission selector. Although it does not allow for like difficulties that you know, if you're actually never mind, I think you can change the difficulty setting from the menu. Now but it doesn't allow you to, you know, you can't go back to like mission one and have everything you had, you know, much later. You, you know, you'll be going back to what you had at that time of weapons, equipment, and powers and such. Now, when you are, you know, fighting, you can strike with the blade, you can block, you can shoot. All of this without having to swap weapons, so that makes, you know, so yeah, fighting is very natural and just, yeah, very smooth. Now, if you block at just the right time, 
the enemy might get slightly off balance and then you can like insta kill them and there are also times where you might lock blades with an enemy and you know have to really mash the key now. Now the among the enemies are these you know these gang members that are you know working from the whiskey distillery so they're running around with like you know whiskey bottles and I think they also have like a cigar so when they attack they might take a swig of the whiskey then blow flames at you that's very cool and there are these hounds that are really like you know they might grab onto your arm and then you have to mash the key to take them out and these weepers this is an especially cool and creepy concept these are the people who are almost dead from the plague like they're you know they're they're just barely there still you know mentally speaking and like you know and they will attack you much like rage zombies they will come at you grab you and like vomit blood and drool you know, saliva onto your face and yeah this is really cool and again really follows this thing of the plague yeah it's it's a really yeah k kudos now, and some of your enemies just might have magic powers as well. There are these acid spitting plants too, and I already mentioned the wall of light. There is something called the arc light, which is essentially a Tesla coil. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And, I mean, it'd be fitting, you know, this kind of steampunk kind of thing and rotating towers with with light that you know search light now and then there are these stilt wearing they're called tall boys they're basically human beings with these individual pieces of armor you know about a meter long and you know, 10 20 centimeters wide that they hold up to you know defend themselves and they're firing these incendiary ammos also and yeah and the the tall boys the wall of light and the arc light, arc light all have these canisters of processed tanks of processed whale oil that power them and with the two buildings, you can, as mentioned before, remove them to disable it. You can also, at any time, you you yeah, these tanks, it's it's oil, and yeah, it's explosive. If you throw one far enough, it'll explode. If you fire on it, it'll explode. And these tall boys, they're carrying tanks on their back of this, so. Yeah, you can shoot those to make very short work of them. Although once noticed, it's going to be a little more difficult, of course. So, yeah, you know, you can basically, like, let's say there's an arc light, and you have to get past it, and there are maybe, like, a couple of guards as well. You find the whale oil tank that, that powers it, take it out, okay, you just completely disabled the arc light, throw it at the enemy, to blow up, you just completely turn the tables on who has the control in the situation. So, very, very cool. Now, the the powers and equipment are you know you don't have to use them. They're basically bonuses, and they're really you know very badass to use. There are points in the game where it's, there's too little guidance for the player and you might have trouble finding your way. Now the powers are teleportation, possession, the the vision one, 
summoning rats, freezing time, and the wind push, which is not entirely unlike telekinesis, but yeah. You're, you're given blink, but the rest you have to unlock, or rather, the rest you, you choose whether or not to unlock and use. Now, you can upgrade them in the field, which, you know, means there's a lot less weight to it. And this is where I really have to compare it to Deus Ex 1, because that is really the gold standard for this kind of thing. In Deus Ex 1, in order to unlock a new ability, you have to find the augmentation canister, carry it back with you, which, you know, it'll, it'll take up a bunch of space in your inventory. And this also doesn't have an inventory. You don't have to limit how many powers or how many, you know, the ammo and such. You, know, you have a max carry capacity for the individual ammo types, but that's it. When you've gotten back, you then have to find a medical bot, which they're not, they're easy enough to come by once you've gotten back, but you may not find one in the mission. Then you are forced to choose between the two different powers that that canister can unlock. Then you get the, you know, the ability, and then if you want to upgrade that thing, you have to find upgrade canisters, which are completely different from augmentation canisters. And this also means that throughout the game, how many, you know, which abilities you're able to unlock very much depends on how far along in the game you are. So, yeah, that that has weight to it, you know. Now, you can basically have all the powers unlocked at once and you can use them most of the time, even underwater. Now, you do, you know, all of them you do have to buy, and some of them are very expensive, except, you know, Blink Level 1, you get automatically. Now, there are six active powers, the ones I mentioned before, and four passive powers, and they're not really separated. It's, you know, it's ruins for all of them to unlock, so yeah, I, I really wish that they would separate them. That's always the way to go. Again, more weight to it that way. Now, again, you, you know, the powers you can fill with in the field, the, the weapon upgrading and, you know, weapon and equipment upgrading and, yeah, has to be purely between missions. And although sometimes in missions you can buy ammo during the mission, and, and you're going to, of course, find more, yeah, some of, especially some of the rarer ammo, you also have to buy between the missions. Now, there is no undoing choices, which I greatly appreciate. The, yeah, when you've made a choice to unlock a power, that's it. You can't just sell it again to, yeah. Now, summoning rats can hide a body or even kill an enemy, although do note that if there are too many enemies and they're to, you know, they have two big guns and such, you can't just summon rats and expect it to go, you know. You might yourself have to attack as well. You can combine the various powers. There's a lot of room for creative use of them. You know, it's... It's also worth noting that if you... Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of options there. And the abilities are very badass, but not too strong. Each of them have a set duration, mana cost, and, you know, effectiveness and such. So, yeah, you, even if you, excuse me, even if you have all of them, they're still, excuse me, 
you still actually have to think about how to use and you know you just you're not just walking right through the game with no trouble at all now and the you know the the mana can sometimes recharge on like very low levels and such but it is one pool for all the mana so you know you you can use you know, and, and some of them cost a lot. You can use several at the same time, but it's still gonna, you know, that'll take out your mana very quickly if you do. Now, about a fifth of, into the game, I could already buy level one of the most expensive power. So, yeah, that again. Two and and there are two levels to each. I'm not sure I mentioned that already. When you use blink, you can hold it down to like make it percent. You know, you can just right click to blink, or you can hold it down to see where you'd go, and then you know move the mouse to press. You know, and and move Corvo to pick exactly where you want. You can even do that from midair. And if you choose, you know, if you don't want to do it, you can just press the use key to cancel it. You can climb using blink. If you point to a vertical surface right at the edge where it goes into a horizontal surface, then yeah, you'll climb to that horizontal surface by using it. It does take about half a second to, you know, activate. So you can't just like, you know, so you you will fall after doing if you just teleport to mid air. So you can't like use it to just like keep yourself in the air constantly. Now the heart is you know yeah it's it's basically it's kept alive by like magic or something you know but yeah it it is or was a human heart. And it has this really cool effect of beating faster and lighting up when the enemy closes in on you. Oh, wait, that's not it. When you point to a room where it's pretty unnecessary for it to beat and light up because it already gives you a meter direction, meter counter direction. Yeah, I, I don't know quite, they, quite why they didn't go the other way on that and you can prompt it to say things and these will underline slash spell out the meaning behind certain groups and settings and such and it will say things sometimes like I have not been granted the gift of death misery everywhere which just goes to show you can take the heart out of the emo you can't take the emo out of the heart now powers do not no none of the powers rule out the others nor are you limited to having a certain number you know you can get all of them again less weight to them and there are also these bone charms which are you know small yeah boons to that that you can equip and you can only equip a limited amount and you know among them are such things as possess white rats for longer. Now, when you possess, it's a limited time offer, and on level one, it's only animal. On level two, it is also human beings. You move, you know, inside this person. You're not just like checking stuff out. No, you move via what you've possessed. And when possession ends, whether it's you ending it or the time limit you now stand exactly where you you know move to as the possessed thing so yeah it's a great way to again you know go through a tunnel you know sneak into an area you know less easily seen things like that yeah although do also note that if you die while possessed you you know corvo dies so again you know limitations and Making it, yeah, making it more interesting like that. Now, and 
for the colors that. And much like in Deus Ex Human Revolution, you can get, you know, in, in that you can get almost all the different abilities in the one in one playthrough. In this you actually can get all of them, and about half of them, as I mentioned, two, level two. So yeah, it's you know why why even take another playthrough? You're not going to customize your character that much differently. It's just well, okay, now I want to try you know using this ability more, or now I want to try going for low chaos or high chaos. It's just yeah, there's there's not as much replayability as there easily could be. Now, playing this as a first-person shooter is less fun than playing it, you know, as a stealth game, and that is, you know, I always appreciate when we get stealth games. You know, there there are more than enough first-person shooters, and I mean no offense to fans of first-person shooters. I mean, there are first-person shooters that I absolutely love. But we do also need good stealth games. Now, the objectives really aren't varied enough. Basically, it always boils down to move and or kill this character. Now, I want to mention that the settings can be fairly varied, just always within the city of Dunwall which I may not have mentioned, is surrounded by water. So it's, you know, it is an island that, you know, the whole thing takes place on an island. And there are a lot of really cool sights to, you know, when you're looking out over the water and, you know, when you're seeing buildings off in the distance, sometimes not even on the, you know, you know too far away to even swim to, so yeah. Now, as I already mentioned, there are too few of the stealth elements that actually work, and too few in general. This does not have a gray stealth state, so if you're seen, you were seen, you know, the enemy will never completely forget. Now, if you're above an enemy and you like jump down and attack, you can do a drop attack if you press the attack button before landing and it will break the, the fall, it'll melee kill yeah, it's pretty cool and again I do wish that it allowed for you know, knocking out instead of, but yeah when you when you use melee and you're choosing whether to knock out or kill Knocking out is slower than, yeah, and you can all only do it from behind, so that's also something worth, you know, you know messy or slow is, is basically the, yeah. And it also, it's too bad that there's only the one version of attacking from behind. You know, if, if you're attacking with the blade, you, know, you might be slitting a throat, you might be stabbing, you know, there, there are a bunch of different attacks. With stealth, again, either you fire a trank dart arrow, or you're just, you know, what's it called? Choking them out, you know, the, yeah. Until they, until they're knocked out. I do quite like, you have to hold down the, the, the button for choking them out. If you let go before the, the choking is done, the guy will like knock his head back to, to get free from you and then attack. You know, I, that's, yeah, that's, that's cool. I like that. Especially because the first person perspective, so you're really seeing their, you know, the back of their head smacking into your face. You know, it, yeah, it feels like you're, they're literally smacking into your face. So now. And when you, also a very nice thing, when you've knocked someone out like that, immediately after, 
you'll be prompted to hold down the use key if you want to carry them. You don't have to. You can leave them where they are if you're sure, you know, if, if you want to for whatever reason. But you can also just immediately go into carrying. Yeah, that's that's very nice. Instead of having to deal with that after having already, yeah. Now, when you've completed a level, you'll be told your current level of chaos overall, how many enemies you killed in it, how many bodies were found, whether you like ghosted, you know, went undetected. I do kind of wish that it also had a counter for how many you knocked out. Yeah, just again, I, I realize that that already gives you low chaos, but still. Now, I think I already mentioned if you're behind cover, you're leaning left or right, you are still safe. You can peek through keyholes also, you know, before or instead of, you know, opening the door. When you're on stairs, that's one of the times where the sight line, line of sight is at its worst. Because if your head is peeking just up over the stairs, you, know, you can maybe just barely see that there's an enemy there, if there is, but he'll spot you immediately. And if you see an enemy coming from further up, you may have to awkwardly back back down from you know via the stairs, and every step he takes you have to especially make faster and you can't just turn tail and run because then you'll be getting up and much more visible so yeah you can usually see where to go so sneaking there is the challenge really you'll always be told you can always see what the direct path is the direct path may just be more costly you know it may require High level magic, for example. Now, when you're moving a body, you know, you can drop or throw it, you can fire your, you know, a weapon while you're still doing it. For some reason, dropping it isn't always, you know, completely noiseless. I, I wish that, again, just make it take longer you know but if yeah I mean that's if I didn't care about noise I would throw them I care about not making noise that's why I drop them and that's again sometimes it will just make noise and you just gave yourself away so yeah now in order to take out guards you may have to wait for them to lower their guard and I suspect that their breaks for urination will break and ruinate them. And we're not even talking about the kind of urination where, you know, Udo Kier returns and is really badass, and the mind control ability that was before Lonard to basically one character is now on a vehicle, more infantry units, a defensive building, even a super weapon. I may have just gotten off topic. You can store bodies in trash cans. And even hide yourself. This is a lot like Hitman Blood Money and Hitman Absolution. In Blood Money, you can't, you couldn't use the same box to do both, and it was also kind of limited. Always just, yeah. In in Absolution, you know they do combine. You can hide or hide a body body in there. This came out so close to that, they probably just had the same idea. It wasn't a rip off, but. Something that those two Hitman games do that this doesn't is give you a proper opening to look through. Again, it, here it, it opts for being more realistic, I suppose. You only have a tiny sliver to look through, so it's not very useful at all. Now, when you're picking up and, you know, if you're trying to pick something up for throwing, for distracting, you, you know, Usually, or this will always be like, you know, glass, cups, fine china, stuff like this. Things that will shatter, which means that you can see what they are from afar. 
you only get one use per, you know, for a item for that, and it will be noisy. There's there's no subtle distracting. So very good choices there. You know, that is weight to an an item. You know, that that's weight to an aspect. Now, when you point to objects, you get an outline with text and a cursor indicating which it is. And, you know, it'll be something you can pick up for distracting. It'll be something you can store, something you can read, or something you can eat. And not only do you always get these, you know, text and cursor and the, the outline indicating exactly what you're pointing to, you also, you know, you can tell from afar. After, you know, a little bit into the game, you can tell, well, that's a can, that's food, that's that's for eating, that's a paper, that's a book, that's, yeah, you know, and, you know, and, and you also get, you'll develop an eye for loot items, you know, when you've, you know, grabbed your first, you know, half dozen of, you know, expensive feathers or, you know, yeah, various various loot items. You'll start recognizing them, obviously. Now, you can pickpocket in this, so you don't necessarily have to knock out, much less kill someone for their keys. So that's yeah, always always quite a like when that's an option. Now. Social stuff may also be in some of this, not necessarily much, but just, yeah. There are times where you will be told when you're entering or exiting a neutral or hostile area. These are just rare enough that you wonder why they bothered to put that in text at all. Is it not like it's particularly difficult to tell where these are even just as you enter or leave. It's like that's a guard. This is this is a you know this is where the the boundary between two areas goes is now. I already mentioned some of the stealth you know, inconsistencies where you're very suddenly noticed, even though you sometimes really shouldn't have been. It yeah, it usually does force you into fighting, and yeah, it's it's nice that you at least can here, although you may not have been, you know, going for being able to fight. But but yeah, it shouldn't you shouldn't be forced to fight when you basically can't in this kind. Again, this is where like. Hitman or commandos, you may be able to. Well, so much commandos. Hitman, you can just you know pull out the you know the most appropriate silenced weapon, you know, submachine gun, pistol, whichever. Quickly take those out. You didn't completely lose, but here it's you know it's likely that it's gonna make noise as you fight, and yeah, you just. You know, it just wasted all that time you spent carefully sneaking. It is worth noting that in fights, the AI employs different tactics, countering your attacks, you know, attacking in different ways. Very nice. Now, when you, you know, load into a new area, it's not always safe. I mean, it, there weren't a lot. Of areas that weren't, but it's still there shouldn't be any. It's you know when you enter a new area, just yeah that area should be completely blocked off from being seen by others. It's again just yeah the the stealth elements in this can be really frustrating. Now the graphics are pretty nice. It's you know, it's a good art style, and I I rather like that it it keeps to a first-person perspective. 
everywhere except the very ending. Now, and they're, you know, yeah, the, the cutscenes are always, almost always, again, in engine, and you can usually move the camera. Again, this goes for pretty much everything except the ending. You can't always move the camera, but most of the time. Now, I suppose that covers it. I, as for the powers, and this I believe will be the closing thought, I don't know why they weren't all, again, in my mind, they should all have been limited to activate between missions. That's where you get blink, is between missions. If that, you know, if, if you were forced to only unlock a new one between missions, and then you got a blink style tutorial for it, that I think would be really cool. Again, instead, you're having to use them out in the, yeah, and they may have really strong consequences where, I don't know, I just feel like teleportation is not necessarily the most complex or the most difficult to figure out, you know, and yeah, if they had given you tutorial areas for the rest of them, I think that would have been very interesting. But yes, and in, to sum up, I guess, the stuff can be a lot of fun, albeit the gameplay, gameplay can get very tedious, and there are definitely not enough, there's not enough, enough variety to the objectives, overall not to the settings either, and the, it really takes a lot away from the stealth gameplay that it's so inconsistent. I mean, again, I you know, Pricing Thief is like second nature to me. If you really want something like this, I would still go with Thief, but I am very glad to see that something that gets so much of it right is, you know, has, has been made so recently. That is just, yeah, very much a relief there. Yeah, but yeah, so, so the stealth mechanics and outside of playing it stealthy, it's just not as much. It's, you're, if you want a good first person shooter with, you know, powers and such, I would go with Bioshock instead. You know, it just, it is more, yeah, that's, that's actually also something I meant to say about the powers. Here, Again, the, the religious extremists, the overseers, are painted as the bad guys because they're so corrupt and things are really bad under, you know, when, when they have a lot of power. And again, you're, you're sent to take out the leader of them, and it's very clear he's very corrupt. And I'm not saying that corruption doesn't happen. I'm not saying religious extremism isn't a horrible thing, but not all religious institutions are extremists. And this doesn't set up properly, or not, it doesn't set up interestingly this sort of conflict between the outsider and this, you know, the, the outsider with, with the runes, with the bone charms, and then the overseers. You don't really get a sense of, again, thief, the pagans versus the hammer, the hammerites, you know. The pagans are chaotic and just nature and just completely unpredictable and, you know, natural. Whereas the Hammerites are very strict and very disciplined, but they do also maintain order. If it was up to the pagans, society couldn't function. It's, it's really, yeah, that's, that's, and that is often how, you know, you have to find a balance between being strict and letting things happen the way they normally would, you know, doing what comes naturally. And here, there's just not that much to, you know, to speak against the, the outsider. It's just, he gives you stuff. There's not really anything you're giving up to, to do that. And that again in, in Bioshock, 
that very much is you know your your everyone you're facing has done too much genetic manipulation on themselves but to complete the game you're doing you know manipulation of your own genes it's it's a lot like with system shock 2 you know where you have you have to use these you know combinations of computer and human and you may also really want to use these very natural but really disturbing kind of genetically you know manipulated and very alien kind of things and and yeah in bioshock a lot of these genetic manipulation you can really see this is this is not natural this is never mind not natural this is kind of, this is this is sick stuff, you know. If if you're letting your arm become a swarm of bees, and then it's that that is like, you know, I mean, it's badass. It's awesome to use, but you're like, that is not right. That a human arm is not supposed to do that, and that really, you know, you understand the conflict. You see how well it's badass. I want to use it. It makes things so much more convenient, you know. But at what cost? And here these magical powers don't make you feel that unnatural they're just you know you just have the hand and then you use the magic and then it it yeah and and add to that as far as i know at least this game does not change you know the the chaos is affected by whether or not you kill and the like it's not based on how much or how little or whether or not you use magic there's an achievement for going through it only using blink but and only unlocking blink but not really a yeah and again when you play through system shock 2 i don't remember for sure bioshock but i don't think so but in system shock 2 as you're playing through it you choose to go in the direction of technology or this more you know living kind of thing and yeah you you have to find a happy you know a happy marriage between the two a good balance or go entirely in one direction or another and that's compelling because there's a real conflict there and conflict is necessary you know if if one side completely wins then we have thief 2 the metal age and yeah anyway I think I'm starting to drift off topic, but if if you really want, a, I already mentioned that the the you know the original thief for this kind of environment and you know, or the, this kind of eerie and creepy and steampunk world with really great stuff. If you want a more recent one, I realized that it came out after this, but Splinter Cell Blacklist just does it better. You know, I got into the story and into the characters. Excuse me, the gameplay is a ton of fun, and you, you know, and you can play it completely stealthy or completely just blowing everything up, and you actually kind of want to. And you know, it, yeah, it's it's fun to play either way, and it's just so much more gratifying stealth because you have options and it usually does go the way that it you know it yeah the the better you are and the more you try to play it by you know really doing everything the the most effic efficient way and really just take out everybody or you know not at all you know things like that yeah it very much follows how you and how you played and again in this it just is a bit too easy regardless of you know non-lethal or violent yeah although it, it is you know the the fighting can be very challenging but again the game you know you to get the best ending and to not have to fight everything in your path you'll want to not fight so yeah and I do believe that covers everything. But yeah, I mean, still, 
it's very interesting. It the the world, you know, this world built on processed whale oil is very compelling. And if you know, if you want thief style gameplay, but you don't want to go back to thief, yeah, this this has that very very much and it is fairly open i will say that that again you know to, to contrast with sponsor of blacklist this actually does let you you know in in blacklist you're always getting to a new place and then doing something there in this you actually can choose completely different ways to get between areas and completely different solutions. Again, I just wish that it was more like Hitman Blood Money where you yourself have to figure out, you have to scope the place out and then see, okay, if I do this, maybe, where in this it just kind of dumps the solution, but still, well done game and there's a lot of really great stuff here. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.